Don't let this happen to you. Two 6-cell batteries were purchased at the exact same time. Both are in the second season. However, between season 1 and season 2, one was put in at the correct storage voltage throughout the off-season. The other was left at 90%. Look at the difference. Hey guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to the channel here. I hope you're having a great day, night, evening, whatever it happens to be, wherever you are watching. Today we're going to be covering exactly how we go through the process of bringing your lithium polymer batteries or other battery packs up to their storage voltage. What is that storage voltage? What is the importance of it? And how do you get to the storage voltage if you do not have that function within your own charger? So let's get started. First thing I wanna talk about is exactly why it's important for lithium polymer batteries to achieve a storage voltage when you're not using them. So when we say we're not using them, this is between or exceeding the five day mark. It's roughly around a week. If you're not gonna be using them for more than that time period, you need to get those battery packs into their proper storage voltage. So why do you wanna go ahead and bring lithium polymer batteries up to the proper storage voltage? Well, here's a great example. I had two lithium polymer batteries both were in their second season both bought at the exact same time however one battery pack was placed in at the proper storage voltage for the off season the other was not the other was left at around 90% charge now this is can happen to anybody where you forget about one battery pack and then you pay the price when you actually go and look at that battery packs voltage the next season I ended up looking at it just before I was running some of my RC vehicles for the season and what happened is I was shocked I was shocked that one battery pack was left at 90%. So what I do, I hopped on to uh, my charger, ended up plugging it in, looked at the voltage of each cell, and all of them were quite high. I ended up discharging it to the proper storage voltage, and then a couple weeks later, I ended up using it after I got all my RC models ready. Now the problem is that battery pack has a significantly higher uh, resistance and its internal resistance. I mark all my battery packs, the initial resistance that I see average for each of the cells, and I place that on the end of the battery pack. This battery pack, however, had a very, very high internal resistance as compared to the, the other battery pack, and you could see that. Now I have an opportunity to use my situation in a place where we can see the difference between a battery pack that was placed in at the proper storage voltage and one that was not and left pretty much at a full charge. The difference is significant. It's almost to the point where this battery pack will not work in a very high powered application any longer. There's gonna be a significant difference between those two battery packs. The one with the higher internal resistance is gonna get hot, it's gonna overheat, it's not gonna put out the same amount of power. A lot of things that are gonna be very troublesome for a high powered uh, radio controlled application meaning that that battery pack only lasted me one season and that's not how long battery packs should last now let's jump into how we go ahead and charge up our battery pack or discharge it to the correct voltage using the setting on our charger open up the function you want to select the store function within your charger make sure you select the correct profile here we're charging 4s4000 we select a 3.83 volts per cell with a charge rate of 8 amps and discharge of 6 amps here we see the battery pack going through its initialization. It's checking that you have correct connections within the balance port and main leads. The charge initiates and jumps up to that eight amp mark. So here you can see that the charge is going. You get some basic information there. You can go and select some other additional screens to see the average voltage, gap voltage, maximums and minimums. Here we are able to see the individual cell voltage followed by the resistance. The resistance will show up right here. We see the resistance being in between the 5.5 and 7.1 milliohm mark. And at the end of this charge, we skip forward and we're able to see the final charge being 3.83 volts per cell on average across the battery pack. If your charger does not have that function where you can set the correct voltage, what you want to do is go ahead and apply your own discharge or charge function. However, what you'll have to do is monitor the charge. You either can set it so that you can stop the charge at a specific voltage, or you set it so you can stop the discharge at that specific voltage. If you don't have those options, what you'll have to do is charge it or discharge it until you hit the correct voltage. Now for those of you that have the old style nickel metal hydride battery packs, what you'll want to do is put them on your charger, bring them up to essentially the fully charged mark. 
in terms of their capacity. Then you can go and allow them to enter the storage, whatever, wherever you're storing them. You'll want to make sure that they're stored at room temperature or slightly cooler. Another point to make is that every three months, I would go ahead and check those battery packs and charge them up again to that fully charged mark. This way, you will make sure that they are not sagging below 1.00 volts. That, was, that is what you want to avoid with these type of battery packs or cells in particular. What you'll notice about these cells is that they will have a self discharge rate which will affect them over time. If you were to leave them for an extended period of time, they can self discharge and go down to essentially a zero volt mark. And that of course is going to take a very long time, however it's very possible. Fortunately for the nickel metal hydrides, they are not as sensitive as lithium polymer battery packs in terms of the voltage that you place them into storage. Lithium polymer battery backs are much more sensitive to storage than the nickel metal hydrides. That does it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.